Okay. Would you do the roll for me, uh, Chip? Sure. Okay. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Adele Slaughter. Here. Alexander Black. Not yet. We'll be here in five minutes. Chris Trent. Chris. I see Chris. He's your your sound is. Susan Shelbe. Here. There you are. Uh, Jesse Sanford. Here. Chip Man here. Melanie Winter. I see Maisie. Here, I'll take here, here, here. Yes, sorry. Tony Knight is not. Andy Epstein. Oh, he's not here. You have not seen Andy and Scott Mandel, but does not count towards quorum. You still have quorum. Okay, great. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, yeah, we can hear you. Here. Thank um, you. <laughs> do we have any announcements by government representatives or guests? Hey, Claudia. Hey, Stephen. Go ahead. Introduce yourself and speak to us. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, uh, my name is Stephen, and this is Claudia. Um, and within the tiles, Claudia is right next to me. Yeah. Uh, and we are the California Climate Action Corps Fellows being hosted by City Council District 4. And one of our projects is community education and outreach around Senate Bill 1383, which requires Angelinos to participate in organics recycling by placing food scraps and any food soil paper in their green bins so that the city can turn it into soil amendments and compost rather than sending it to a landfill. Uh, to help with this initiative, CD4 and LA Sanitation are handing out free kitchen top pails to any LA San customer which means all single family uh, homes as well as multifamily buildings with four units or less. And so with that coming up this month, we'll be having events to hand out these pails and we'll provide further information on SB 1383. So I see that there's no chat box in this meeting, but if Steven and I can get someone's email so that we can provide our own contact information, we'd be happy to share the link for the City Council District 4 events page, as well as a flyer containing information on the dates and the times and the places for these events. But right now I can share some of that information with you. So our current planned dates are Saturday, January 21st at the Studio City Rec Center, and Sundays, uh, January 15th, the 22nd, and the 29th at the Studio City's Farmer's Market. And so with that, we'll be hosting an event as well on January 30th called Beyond the Pale, a virtual organics recycling town hall. And that will include expert guest speakers and local community organizations alongside city council member Nithya Raman, which is very exciting. And we will also have a Q&A portion to answer anyone's questions about the programs or um, any comments and concerns. So we'll be giving a bit more information about SB 1383 at the main studio city, um, neighborhood council meeting on the 18th. And so we'll hopefully see you then. This is just an intro to let everyone know. And we'll see you hopefully uh, at the events and around the neighborhood. Thank you so much. Thank you, awesome. Oh, is that the pale? Let's see it. Yeah, but I have screen blur, background blur. So I have to put it, there it is. I put oh. it on my face. You have to actually put it on your shoulder so we can put see it. Put it in front of your face. Put it over your head. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> <laughs> what time are you guys going to be at Studio City Rec Center on the 21st? On the 21st, let me see. We are going to be there at 10 a.m. to 2. 1 p.m. And so if I could get someone's email from here, uh, I know that Scott, I believe, is the yeah, city well, council well, member well, president. Um, and I'm hoping that he has everyone's here email that we can provide that information to him and he can share it with everyone here or he can give all of you uh, Stephen and I's contact information. Um, so whatever's he is. Yeah, I have the flyer and it's uh, been distributed on our, it will be distributed on our agenda when it goes out. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Sure. Scott, could you put these four dates on our calendar? Or should that come from sustainability? If you guys want it on the calendar, sure. I'll put it on there. That would be great. That would be great. Absolutely. Which? 
So you have it in a flyer, right? Yes. I think okay. I sent it to, I did send it to the whole board. Well, I'll look in my email yeah, again. Check your email. You all have the flyer. I'll put it on our calendar. Yeah, put it on our calendar. And I did see uh, the farmer's market, the, that you were going to be at the farmer's market. I already saw that. So that's awesome. And Stephen and Claudia, are you, have you guys been walking around handing out buckets? Have I seen you walk in city streets? <laughs> yeah, you probably have. We've been Having everywhere. People <laughs> slam doors in your face. How dare you? Yeah, no. Actually, Mostly no. Yeah, I was going to say, we've gotten some good reception, so it's been good so far. I think you'll get a very good reception in Studio City. No problem. Yeah, yeah, we have. It's been great. Yeah, great. Thank you so much. It's awesome. One of our um, uh, board members, Alexander Black, has uh, uh, developed a, a, it's a, uh, hey, Alexander, can you hear or you? I saw you on here. On here. Yeah, I can hear you. Can you tell them you about, tell your, about your product? Your composter thing? Yeah, there's, there's just one of several that are on the market, but this one has been uh, something I've been trialing for a long time. Actually, I've been working with all of them, but the newest one, um, I'm working with the company and they're going to offer a discount. It's, uh, it's called the Maestro. It's from Food Cycler. It's an opportunity for everyone in Los Angeles, Southern California, California, to adhere to 1086. And we're supposed to not put our food in the trash. This is an appliance that goes in your in your um, in, in your kitchen. You can put all your food waste, including bones, citrus, dairy, things you never put in a home in a backyard compost. And in just a matter of hours, it's a lot more than the lonely, which people are seeing. It's a better one, and it's, it's, I can get it at the same price. It's actually cheaper, but they're offering to me a car for just a little while. So if anyone wants to reach out to me, I'll just send them information and just fill you with great ideas. Um, so uh, I can, um, I'm driving right now, but it's alexblackphoto at gmail.com, and I can send you more about it. It's the newest generation of food cycler, um, and that's, it's, it's a great opportunity besides all the other great ideas that we've come up with to help people have a, you know, a really great experience being uh, good citizens with their food waste and their water and all that. So anyway, it's really good. It really pulverizes the stuff into, um, into like a dirt like substance, you know, so it's really good. Anyway, uh, but I've tested. So anyway, stay in touch with me and I'll help you out. Thank you so much, Alex. I got your email and I hope you're driving safely uh, <laughs> with all the rain that's happening. That's, so it's Alex Black and then photo is T H O T O at gmail.com. Perfect. I got it down. Thank you so much, Alex. Sure. Um, I see one question from our uh, from the public. Uh, Patty Kirby, would you like to say something? Hi, everybody. Uh, we've been composting for maybe six, seven years. We have a, a bin that we turn and spin. But I just have a question. These these new composters or what you want us to do on the put into the green bin also includes meat. Yep, everything, including everything. meat, raw meat, raw meat, raw bones. I've been testing for Food Cycler from Canada um, on a really aggressive level. I'm actually working with Los Angeles Sanitation because you're we are all about to receive some new bins. Um, uh, the folks at LA Sanitation and LA Compost. I've also been trialing a lot of these different units that are out there. The 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 Lomi, which is really uh, unfortunately not able to handle a lot of what we tend to do on a daily basis, and all the things that people will do right and wrong. But yes, everything things you would not put in a compost, and this accelerates the organics. So now you can go to your regular compost, but with something that's a soil amendment, and then you can make that become very accelerated with your greens and your, your lawn clippings. And those are the nitrogens. And those things will then turn all of us into a lovely real compost. Because this is not a compost, it's a food cycler. And um, be wary of those uh, machines out there that call themselves composters. Mother Earth is the only real composter. I think, fabulous. Well, I think, fabulous. Fabulous. I think, I think Patty Kirby's question was though, can you put meat into the pails that you're handing yep. out? Absolutely, yes. absolutely. No, yes. no, Alexander, it, it's not the it's not the food um, 
it's not the, the device you're talking about. It, this is a question about the city policy. The city policies are coming out with their new bins. I don't know exactly what that policy will be, but that Alex, will be on the Alex. Alex, we have Alex, we have guests on here telling us what the policy is right now. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I just wanted you to share with them your recycler thing. And so they're interested in that. But what they're doing is giving out uh, pails to people to take their food waste and put it into the green bin be because that's the law now. Correct? Yes, that is correct. Yeah. Um, you will receive a postcard from LA Sanitation basically giving you the 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 go ahead to start using your larger green bin to recycle your uh, any kind of food scraps, food soil paper. And Patty, to your question, the city does accept um, meat, bones, fish, cheese. Um, just a general piece of advice though, um, you know, LA does get hot. So the recommendation is just to keep those kinds of scraps in your fridge until you know your green bin is gonna get picked up and then you can uh, dispose of it and the city will pick it up and, and recycle that. Great. I see Melanie Winter has her hand up. Hey, thanks. I just love it. That's my, my mother did that growing up. All the scraps went in the freezer until trash day, you know. Um, so Stephen and Claudia, welcome. And I'm going to uh, have you rehearse answering questions that I was telling George you were going to get from constituents like me who live in multifamily units larger than four. So now's your chance. What about us? When is that rolling out? What's going on with that? How come we can't get it? What's going on? <laughs> so it depends on the service provider that you have, but we are currently working with them to get compost pails for those multi-unit family uh, buildings. So, um, however though, exciting news, if your building has a green bin, you still are able to compost and you still are able to put all your food scraps, your meats and cheeses and dairies and bones and all that wonderful stuff in your green bin at your apartment complex. We're just still working on getting the pails to um, those multi-unit homes, but you're still able to compost. So some great recommendations are those big coffee canisters that you can use or um, any other container like Tupperware that you might keep in your home. Those make for a great, um, substitutions right. but if you would still like a pail we're still working with the service provider currently to get those to the multifamily unit homes but you're still able to compost which is good right things. but we don't in in buildings like mine and in buildings mm. in cd4 um mm -hmm. that are larger than four we don't have bins at all we work with the large hall providers so we have the very large black big black things and the big mm. blue things these aren't bins they're mm dumpsters right so we have the large dumpsters and we have no green dumpsters we just have black and blue mm -hmm. so, so for us what do you recommend for people who live in the larger multifamily units who do mm -hmm. who rely on waste haulers who only have the black and blue what should we do or who should we talk to mm -hmm. in our building or our hoa yeah okay so the recommendation there is to talk with your other residences and then talk to either the property manager or the owner of the building to work with whoever is in charge of collecting their waste to get a green bin because buildings should have green bins. So if that's something that you would really want to have, uh, and I'm sure Stephen could further add to this, I'm, I'm probably missing something, but you would then contact your property manager or the person who's in charge of the building and um, speak to them about getting a green bin. And then Steven, if you wanted to add anything. Yeah, so Claudia summed up long-term solution perfectly. Short-term solution, um, if you wanted to take action now, uh, an amazing organization, LA Compost, they have a lot of pickup sites in Los Angeles. Uh, they have one in Griffith Park and other pickup sites at farmer's markets local to the area. Long-term solution, we'd love to get your contact information and then we could set aside some time to work with the decision maker or property manager. And we would work with them, especially 
um, in regards to the fact that this will be compulsory starting 2024 for larger multi-unit dwellings. Great, thank you so much, See, I'm putting you on the spot so you can rehearse for all the people like me who are gonna be in your face. And then I, I will I ask, is there any chance of getting the Studio City Farmer's Market to be an LA compost drop-off site between now and 2024, when maybe the larger multifamily compost that haulers will get their shit together? If they aren't already, um, which I'm sure you you know better than I do. Um, They're not. Okay, perfect. We have contacts with LA Compost. Luckily, there's fellows there and people that we've worked with. So I'll definitely put that on their radar. Great. Thank you. Yeah, I have a follow-up question to what Melanie was asking, and that is, do they have, if they have the big black and the big blue dump dumpsters, do they have big green dumpsters? Um, so that, yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah. Well, I was going to say that depends on the service provider. So, um, uh, I believe it's either waste management or UWS, but I believe it's waste management. They do have different size green bins depending on the needs of the building. So not those great big, huge ones, but um, they do have different size ones. And then they meet with the property owner, the property manager of the build, bigger multi-home buildings, at least for this one uh, waste hauler. And they decide on the needs of the building. So it depends on the waste hauler, but I know for at least one of them, they do have different sizes depending on the needs. Yep. Hey, Claudia, I would I would really recommend getting the weight, the map from sanitation about which waste haulers are where in your district so that when you're at a community meeting, you can speak to, because I know that there are four waste haulers across the county. And I, mm -hmm. I'm ashamed that I can't remember which one is in my neighborhood right now because I've worked with them all on different projects, but it would be really smart of you both to have that map handy. So wherever you're at community event, you know which waste hauler is handling that, ter handling that territory. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool, thanks. Thank we you. also have a hand up from Peter Cole. My turn, huh? Yeah. Hello. Oh, be nice. <laughs> uh, so this program, um, is it mandatory or it be mandatory, you said, in, in 2024? So it currently is. Um, so it, there's different levels to it. It's mandatory for multi-family uh, buildings larger than four. And it will be mandatory for single family homes. You just have to wait, as Stephen said previously, for the postcard from LA Sanitation. Um, but uh, there won't be fines or penalties until 2024. So that's why we're here to start the outreach and the education so that by the time those fines come around, hopefully no one's getting fined because you've had the education and you've had the help from the city. Um, what entity will be, um once there's fines, what entity will be going around and inspecting? That will be the waste haulers. So they're going to like get out and like before they put it on the machine, they're going to go open up the bin and inspect and make sure that it's there. It happens. It happens before that. So the um, people who are collecting the waste themselves, they they do waste assessments and they're trained on that. So they have data that's specific to blocks um and they that gets reported to either uh waste management uws athens la sanitation has a similar system mm -hmm. so it's by so they collect their data by blocks so that rather than individuals if say uh so say my multi-unit dwelling our green bin is very contaminated then that specific multi-unit dwelling, a uh, quadplex or duplex, that will get flagged. And then, you know, when, when it does become compulsory, they will give out a notice. It'll be a written notice to start, and then it can progress up to fines. So how will single family homes be monitored? Uh, just the same. So mm -hmm. the, the bins are inspected, they're looked at. It's a visual test. Um, and if just visually it doesn't seem that contaminated, then nothing, it won't progress to a letter or, or fines. Is there a mechanism in place to, um, if, if they inspect and they say you did 
X, but you say you did Y because you live in an area where perhaps there's a lot of homeless or people that like to throw dog feces in your bin that you can contest it? Uh, there's, we've spoken to uh, recyclists, recyclist service providers before and um, in places that are high traffic, uh, we know of constituents having, you know, worked with their service provider to kind of um, see ways that they can kind of either lock up their their compost bin. Um, there's compost bins that you can kind of add a latch to um, and things like that before progressing to even the full removal of, of, um, of your green bin, which in some cases, if it's extreme enough, um, the recommendation will be a full removal of it. And if that's the case, then there won't be any kind of fine for not taking part in the, in the program. Okay, so for instance, I live next to the LA River and if I get fined a lot, I could just take my waste and turn the LA River into a compost bin. There, there's a lot of error. I, I have a, another home where we do this, so I'm, I'm well aware of the program and it works up there because everybody's like-minded. I just see this as being another total failure of Los Angeles trying to take a good idea, but as with um, uh, blowers, gas-powered leaf blowers, um, they've never been able to figure out how to actually enforce that ban, and that's sort of my benchmark for, well, if you can't do that, then you can't ban gas-powered cars and electric vehicles and your trash can, blah, 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 blah. It's just, I, I just don't see that this is actually going to um, work, but good luck. Thank you. Yeah, and that's a very concern. Um, for context, there has been, um, we're, we're on the heels of a three year long pilot program that LA mm -hmm. Sanitation has, has done with single family homes, um, that number in around 48,000 homes. And the, the impacts of that, that pilot have been very positive. Um, mm -hmm. People, there's been a lot of buy-in um, and uh, LA Sanitation has worked through any kind of um, uh, problems with contamination through communication, working with residents, educating them. It's very hands-on. Um, and the same goes for the other RSPs. Uh, waste management has spoken to uh, their education with their own mm -hmm. residents, as well as um, Athens as well. They have a recycling ambassador program, so they work uh, they work in tandem with residents to ensure that residents are empowered to know what goes in and out of um, different types of bins. So there's there's a lot of there's a lot of relationship building between RSPs and residents. So um, I'd say that it's it's pretty positive, and there's a lot of hand holding um, as there should be because this is a new program for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So this applies to well, last question. This applies to everybody. So what about mm -hmm. the uh, the unhoused that uh, are living near me and their food scraps are everywhere as well as their Amazon boxes and whatever. Doesn't apply to them, right? Or does it? Just just a question. Uh, no. I mean, are you gonna provide waste bins uh, near homeless sites also to, and educate them to do this? Uh, do you have? I. I can tr I can answer this if you want, Stephen. I can try to answer it. I mean, um, luckily for us, Nithya Raman's office is trying to work very hard with unhoused persons to get them into a safe, stable place. And of course, you know, they won't be able to participate in the program if they don't have a registered address or a home where they can compost. Um, but I know that her office is working um, endlessly to try and get these people in a stable situation. And so, of course, we all know it's it's more complicated than that. It's not a very straightforward answer. Uh, we all wish it could be and everyone could be happy. But I mean, um, they are working very hard to help. And of course, you know, if they don't have a registered address, we won't be able to have them participate in the program, but we are helping them in other ways. And I don't well, know if Stephen wants to put anything, uh, say anything well, else. 
Yeah, and uh, a component of the bill, Senate Bill 1383, is first and foremost food recovery. Mm-hmm. So food is recovered from businesses, and that food is then given to food recovery organizations, and those organizations feed people experiencing, you know, housing insecurity, food insecurity, mm-hmm. and that that is one tactic of the Senate bill. The food recovery and recycling through residential addresses, those are done through um, contracts that the mm-hmm. residents themselves have with RSPs. So that's that's another component. Thank you. Great, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, okay, next we have uh, comments from the public on matters not on our agenda, but within the committee's jurisdiction. Anybody from the public want to speak? Peter, you have your hand up. Do you want to speak again, or is, well, is that for my hand? But I don't know how to do this Zoom thing on my phone. Oh Lord, um, I got it. Okay, you- so let, me, let me ask a question. Um, do I have one minute? Yeah, sure. Go. Can I have two? I'm kidding. Um, you got well, ninety what- seconds, man. Okay, God, it's so nerve wracking. What about this committee tackling the uh, a couple things, which would be um, following up on trying to get our, our uh, leaf blowers, uh, their, our gas powered leaf blowers out of the hands of our gardeners, uh, maybe an education program or contacting somebody to get a rebate so we can, we can move this along, that would be good. And um, I know I take care of like, a, an area by my house, uh, either I'm trimming or blowing or whatever, but I wonder about uh, sustainability, reaching out to certain areas that are a bit disheveled and go, hey, do you need a hand? Do you need some tools, a bin or whatever? Try and clean up. Maybe I'm thinking more by the river because I see a lot of areas that are overgrown on the, not on the downslope, but on the street side that it would be nice to do some cleanups. Okay, I'll put that on the agenda for next for next meeting, I uh, the the leaf blower thing has been coming up a lot, so uh, I, that was going to be on the agenda anyway. But thanks for the reminder. Anything else? No, the you know the thing about the leaf blower. So I have a leaf blower with two batteries, and sometimes I'm not around, and I can't even get my gardener to swap the batteries out. So the next week when he's there, if I'm not there, that he has a charged up blower. So. Anyway, it would be good to get the leaf blowers in the hands of the gardeners and they're responsible for it. I don't necessarily think the homeowner should do it, but anyway. Yeah, great. Okay. Thanks. We'll put, we'll, we'll put it on the agenda for next, next meeting. Any other comments from the, uh, from the public? Seeing no other hands raised, let's move on to item, I think it's, are we on five? Oh my. God, I have to toggle back and forth, sorry. Uh, yeah, discussion of a rewrite of our past motion on the zoo, alternative 1.5, um, and I don't need to read all this, I just wanna tell you, and I will put. I will share my screen in a minute with the proposed motion. Um, what happened after the meeting where we unanimously passed that motion, um, Scott felt very strongly that, uh, the motion needed to be more succinct to go before the whole board because it would be too much for them to read. So um, we went about uh, doing a rewrite and let me now share a screen. I think this is it. Yeah. So here is the, uh, I put it up on uh, uh, Google Drive. What is this says a participant has enabled closed captioning. What does that mean? What does that mean, Chip? Does that mean something? Do you know? Someone has it means audio that audio they um, have the ability to um, close captioning is like subtitles. Oh, oh, okay, fine, great. Um, okay, so this is the new um, motion. The Studio City Neighborhood Council supports the mission of the zoo, which is to lead the way in saving wildlife and connecting Angelinos to the natural world by providing exemplary animal care 
delivering distinctive and diverse learning opportunities and creating unforgettable experiences. However, some of the changes proposed in the alternative 1.5, such as an elimination of habitat for sensitive na native species, see the California Department of Fish and Wildlife letter, 2021 letter, and commercialization of a ridgeline would not further the zoo's mission as much as other less disruptive options that would do more to support Griffiths Park's existing ecosystem and biodiversity while allowing us to enjoy it. We could support an alternative that prioritized the only amount of develop only the amount of development absolutely necessary for expanded animal exhibits, animal care, for visitor accessibility and safety. We are concerned that the environmental costs of some of the proposed changes would outweigh any benefits and would not necessarily enhance people's experience of nature. Therefore, the Studio City Neighborhood Council, as opposed to LA Council File 21-0828, uh, parentheses 2022, Los Angeles Zoo Vision Plan, Environmental Impact Report, Infrastructure and Animal Faculty Improvements, unless amended. And then I took what was in the motion, all those whereases, if you remember, and made them this narrative. Do I need to read this? Do you want me to read this? I might as well. Okay, fine. Uh, okay. Um, and this would be additional information. It would not be the motion itself. It would be just information on the zoo. The Los Angeles uh, Zoo Vision Plan plans to develop 16.5 acres of an undeveloped mature California woodland and chaparral in the eastern portion of Griffith Park, which is home to a number of threatened and rare species and provides habitat for a wide range of native vegetation and wildlife, including mountain lion. The protection of the 16.5 acres of wildland would help meet Governor Newsom's vital 3030 goals and complement the city's biodiversity protection and wildlife habitat connect connectivity initiatives. Mature woodlands and chaparral serve to sequester carbon, a function that is critical to our survival. The California Global Warming Solutions Act, AB 32, defined thresholds to reduce carbon monoxide emissions by 2020 to 1990 levels with a further 80% CO2 reduction in 2050. That means every ton of CO2 emitted back into the atmosphere by removal or conversion of older woodlands and chaparral, a, me a measurable adverse environmental effect. The proposed visitor center would be visibly prominent on the hilltop with nighttime events creating light and noise that would negatively impact Griffith Park wildlife. The Los Angeles Audubon Society finds that it is not appropriate to blast a canyon through a ridgeline in, Santa Mo in the Santa Monica Mountains for a condor display in the name of con conservation, particularly when the captive breeding of condors in the back of the house areas at the LA Zoo has been successful for over 30 years. The Department of uh, CDFW has jurisdiction over the conversion, protection, and management of fish, wildlife, native plants, and habitat necessary for biologically sustainable populations of those species. For purposes of CEQA, CDFW is charged by law to provide biological expertise during public agency environmental review efforts, focusing specifically on projects and relate, uh, related activities that have the potential to adversely affect State and fi state fish and wildlife resources. The CDF uh, findings are as follows: adverse impacts of the California area expansion in the zoo uh, alternative 1.5 will be significant. Removing the coast live oak plant community in the project area may increase sediment, debris, and pollution input into, into streams, and the project would result in erosion and pollutants that could affect the quality of Los Angeles River, streams in the canyons, and open spaces surrounding the LA Zoo, and will likely adversely impact an ephemeral drainage uh, located at the bottom of the existing canyon. The project may result in loss of riparian habitat. It is unlikely that there is ample land to uh, available to mitigate the loss of area affected at the proper mitigation of rate of five to one by area affected under CEQA protocols and four to one tree replacement under the city's protected tree ordinance. In the end, the zoo has failed to adequately respond to many to many deficiencies in the focused environmental impact report, including deficiencies found by the CF, CDFW, and now proposes to move forward by requesting comments be limited to the chapters included in the, in the current focused FREIR. 
The survival and well-being of the city's residents depends directly on ecosystem services, including oxygen generation, water purification, topsoil creation, bio, bio, uh, how do you say that? Bio, I can't say it. You know, uh, waste removal and carbon sequestration. These and many other services derive from an integrated community of natural biodiversity. Biodiverse landscapes on the zoo property currently provide benefits to residents that we cannot afford to lose. Bio biodegradation. Thank you. Sorry, it just wouldn't come out. Um, so that is the plan to have that first part is the motion and then the added information uh, supporting the motion. Can I stop the share? Yes. Okay. I'm now to accept the motion. Uh, 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 what you you move to? I move to accept your motion. I second. Awesome. Uh, discussion. Let's have the. Uh... Chris's hands up. I know Chris's hands up, but let's do the audience first and then go to committee. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to uh, weigh in on our motion at all? I don't, seeing no hands raised, let's go to committee. Chris? I have a question, maybe clarification about the, the sentence. I don't have it in front of me. I can't see it, but that was about um, expansion for the uh, condor conservation. Yep. Um, my understanding is they're building a climbing wall, which is supposed to be somehow related to the condor thing. I don't, um, they are trying to build a climbing wall, but I don't think that that has anything to do with the condor thing. So it did. <clears throat> the notion it, was that the climbing wall gave the same experience that the early conservators had to do when they climbed to take the eggs down that could then be incubated in captivity. It's, they actually it's, it's, still it's do it now. It's a narrative, but yeah, there, yeah. that was the story. Right. So the sentence in there that says, for the sake of condor conservation, it sounds like you're <clears throat> potentially um, not supporting that. The issue I have is that none of what they're doing, my understanding, really has anything to do with condor conservation. Once again, it's about entertainment. Uh, building a climbing wall that kids can climb up on is nice and it's fun. <clears throat> it really has nothing to do with condor conservation. So I, that, that one sentence about where it says condor conservation, it really should be condor entertainment or just entertainment. Or education or enter entertainment. <laughs> yeah. it's. <laughs> Ed, edu, edu, edutainment, right? It it sounds like you're agreeing that it's um, condor conservation, and it's, it's not. It says condor display, but I could put condor uh, uh, entertainment. Well, somewhere I heard the the, the words condor. Um, it says it says uh, it says blast through a cannon ridge line and for it was a before that. No, that's it. No, really. Yeah. You want to pull it up again real quick, Adele, sure. just so we can be sure everybody and I, I believe be that's the Autobahn commentary. So I don't think we can amend their commentary that we're quoting. It's not clear. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Let me just go to freaking share screen. Is it here? Uh, yeah. So it's right here. We uh, visibly prominent on the oh, health condor side. display in the name of conservation. Yeah. Um, Particularly when, so we could say condor uh, climbing wall. Yeah, because or, the or condors can, aren't on display at all at the LA Zoo. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But are you then misquoting the Audubon Society? Right, so that's the question from, from Chip. Is this their quote? I thought this piece of verbiage I thought has been banging around in each of the versions of this, and I thought it was paraphrasing uh, the Audubon. I mean, looking, wow. I mean, in the context of the sentence, when you read it, it doesn't seem to trigger the same response when you just heard it spoken, Chris, I, I think. That's fine. I, I can move on with that. I just wanted to make sure because it, it sounded sketchy. 
the first time I heard it. Yeah, uh, um, but when you see what it is, it's not what you thought. Yeah, I, I, I can live with it, but I just want to make that clear that nothing in the plan has anything to do really with, with con or conservation. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, who I'm, uh, Jesse? I don't remember the exact wording, but there was something right in the middle, like the second sentence where it said something like we'd only reallow, we'd only allow um, development for exhibit expansion, but I wondered if we wanted to say existing exhibits, because that kind of left it open ended, like you could build new exhibits and we would be okay with lasting through those things for new exhibits. I, oh, hold on. Uh, okay, let me go back. Sorry, it takes me a minute. No problem. Uh, share a screen, there we go. Chris, do you wanna share photos of the owl as interstitial programming? <laughs> Okay, what do you say? What oh up uh, in here? Yeah, where we say we could support an alternative that prioritize only yeah. the amount of development. Yeah, develop absolutely necessary for expanded animal exhibits. Did we want to say existing? Is that a distinction that needs to be made or no? I'm well, okay they need to. Ex they need to. What? Go ahead. I'm okay with expanding existing exhibits if, if that makes. Expanding existing. Or, or do you want to call it improving? Improving existing. Yeah, improved. Necessary for improved animal exhibits. Improved animal exhibits. Hold on, I can do this. Okay. uh for existing no is that what you want for improving existing animal exhibits okay there you go and thanks we all know how hard that is to do and how painful but how to do well to sit there and edit something with 15 people looking at you saying not that not there yeah <laughs> and and plus i have a spelling disorder so that even helps more yeah. um okay and I, I would love to put instead of condor display i would say condor um but again i think that's the autobahn i couldn't i i went there i couldn't find even the word condo i think okay I don't think it is the. Then we shouldn't say that the national, we shouldn't say that they find if it's not their statement. Then it must be their statement. I, I didn't actually. I, I believe when another member of the committee originally brought this through, I remember her using that phrasing when she took us through this part of it. Okay. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, other comments from the committee? Any other comments? Seeing none, I will go to Scott Mandel. You're not on hi, the committee. Hi there. Uh, one suggestion, I would take the second paragraph and move oh, it no. to the top and oh, lead God. with your opposition to the council file and not start off with what you're in support of because that will be misconstrued. And it'll show that the SCNC is in support of the council file. So lead with your opposition is my suggestion. And then uh, be prepared at the board meeting to answer questions about the amenities. I remember at the last board meeting, people were very concerned about parking. Uh, I think the, was it like a fake winery? There was a sky tram, all kinds of other uh, sort of uh, amusement park amenities that were gonna be added. I'm sorry, what are you saying to do? I I, I need- the, the second paragraph, the second the paragraph. Yesterday, neighbor council's opposed. Uh, I, I, I'd put that, I'd lead with that because you're opposed to the council file. Got it. And I would just, of course, remove therefore the, and just say Studio City 
the board of the Studio City Neighborhood Council opposes council file. That's how they seem to all start. Opposes. If you agree, I just, I'm just saying I, I, I would leave with that and then go into the part of the aspect of the zoo that you support. It do, you don't say LA council file, you just say council file, right? Yeah, council file. Uh, da, 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 et cetera, et cetera, unless amended. And then, then the rest is fine. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure someone is going to have something to say about it, but. Well, I mean, it's reasonable. And, and just, you know, probably not for the, for the motion, but just be prepared, uh, list yourself and whoever else would want to do uh, qu answering questions. Like I mentioned about the amenities, because that was the big focus the last time this was in front of the board and People were commenting about how they have children and they love to take the children to the zoo and they need to park their car and get out their four strollers and their wagon and ice chest and bring all their stuff in. And I think the issue was the parking lot, the sky tram or whatever it was called. And uh, as Chris said, the climbing wall and other attractions because it was being turned into an amusement park, right? Yeah, yeah. I think the fundamental of our thing is you know, we're not saying don't make any changes. We're just saying the way in which you're going about this, blasting through a canyon, adding all these other impacts. You know, there were other versions of this that had a less um, that had less impact on critical resources. So they just need to go back to the drawing board. Well, so, alternative. Oh, totally understood. Yeah. I, I would just be prepared to talk about the amenities because that's what those are the questions you're going to get asked. That's all. Okay. Thanks. Uh, call for a vote. Second, anyone agree? You have to agree. Yes. Someone. Okay. Yes. Um, you want to take uh, you want to take the chip. Chip, you want to take the roll vote vote roll call. Yes, but I should unmute before I do that. Adele, yes or no? Yes. Uh, Alexander, yes or no? Alexander Black, are you there? I'll text him. Go ahead. Yes, yes, I'm here. Yes. Thank okay. you. Uh, Chris Trent. Yes. Susan Shelby. Yes. Jesse Sanford. Yes. Chip Meehan, yes. Melanie Winter. Yes. Tony Knight is not here with us, nor is Andrew Epstein. So seven yeses, two absences. Yes. Who's that? Are you, are you voting for someone? <laughs> I'm voting yes. I get to vote. He's oh, you the do? president. He gets to vote for all the absent yes. committee members. No, seriously, I don't get counted for roll call, but I am allowed to vote. So I'll vote. Are you? Oh, okay. he's voting. So we, so we got eight yes and two absent. Eight yeses. Yes. And two absent. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks, gang. We're on a roll. We're on a roll. Okay, next we have, oh, discussion and oh, yeah, 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 possible motion of council file uh, 221566, climate action adaptation uh, plan, general city plan. Uh, there is a, a council file motion, I guess, which I should read. Oy. Um. Did you send it out with the agenda? I did. Did everyone read it? I, it's I really. A link. It's a link. It was on. It was a link on the agenda. Yeah. If everybody's been provided with it, you shouldn't have to read it all the way through. Okay. I just want to read the last um, paragraph. So, yeah, I'm going to read the last paragraph, which says, "I therefore move that the city planning department, in consultation with the city attorney." the Climate Emergency Mobilization Office and other departments as appropriate report to the City Council within 60 days on the process, timing, costs, potential funding sources, and benefits of adopting a climate action and adaptation plan into the city's general plan. That is the motion. Now, how do we want to do this, Chip? I move that we support 
the motion to investigate if there's a way for the city to get incremental money from grants that are tied to municipalities with climate action and adaptation plans, for example. Also, I had sent, did you get a chance to- Yeah, I have it. I, I added some stuff to it. I have it. I can share a screen. Why don't, yeah, so basically, why don't you show, why don't we do the big reveal and then we'll see if there are questions from there. Okay. So this is our, this is, yeah. The Studio City Neighborhood Council supports Council File 22-1566 Climate Action Adaptation Plan City General Plan. The scientific projections of the impacts of climate chaos reinforce what we in Studio City have been experiencing. Frequent, ongoing, and severe heat waves, wildfires, drought, and most recently, today, flooding and mudslides. Every community in Los Angeles suffers from environmental pollution. Los Angeles consistently has per perhaps some of the worst air quality and the highest co concentrations of toxins in the environment of any major metropolitan region in the nation. Studio City is no exception. The 101 and 170 freeways run through our, the community and our surface streets are congested with commuter traffic. Our cooling tree canopy continues to be diminished. These conditions will likely be exacerbated by pending developments in Studio City. The state incentivizes local jurisdictions to incorporate climate action and adaptation plans into their general plans so that local plans reflect local priorities and values. Accordingly, it makes sense for the city to investigate the potential benefits of developing and adopting a clim climate action and an adaptation plan to guide the city in adapting to climate impacts and mitigating climate pollution, thus improving quality of life, health and safety for residents and visitors. This motion is to be sitted, uh, submitted as, uh, as a CIS to council file 22-1566, climate action and adaptation plan general city, city general plan. I move we adopt this. Do I have a second? We can have discussion after the second. I'll second it. Okay, discussion. Could you put it back up again? Um, yep. One thing, going back to Scott's guidance from earlier, we, okay, we do. We actually start off in this particular case by saying we support the file, okay. I don't see any hands raised. Am I missing it? Something? I'm going to stop share so I can. Uh, no one wants to, no one from the public. Oh, Scott Mandel. If no one from the public. I don't know. Does anyone from the public want to speak? We lost Peter Cole. <laughs> I thought he was going to speak about this. <laughs> okay. So I don't know if you want to address the fact that government affairs uh, is bringing a motion uh, in opposition to the council file. So we have the potential of two motions coming to the board, one in support of and one in opposition of the same council file. And do you have a copy of that yet? Uh, no, we don't have the, actually, <clears throat> let, me, uh, let me see what I can dig up, stand by. <clears throat> Because it would be nice for us to see uh, that. I mean, yeah, I'll, I, if I, I should be able to find it in 30 seconds, I'll cut and paste it to what you have shared on the Google Doc of your zoo, if you don't mind. If that don't way. do it on the zoo. There's a Google Doc of this one. Oh, where's that? It's right next to it. It's called Motion File, Council File 22 1566. That's something I can access? It's on Google Docs. Uh, I don't know if you gave me access. You want me to share it to you? Here, I'll share it with yeah, you. Yeah, you would have to share it with me. You I'll should. share it with you right now. Uh, Need to know, Scott. <laughs> Transcript share. Shared. Let me, let, let me mute, mute my mic while I try to find uh, this so you don't hear me. Um, <laughs> well, I do know a little bit because Barry did call me about it. 
and um, the general feeling was um, because of the way the motion was written. The if you read it, the prior the prior paragraphs talk a lot about social justice issues, and um, uh, you know other issues which have nothing to do really with what they're requesting. Um, it's just um, I I do believe that. Uh, Katie Yaroslavsky is from Council District 5 and might be representing some communities of color and trying to, um, you know, move the needle a bit on the, the fact that they live near a lot of heavy pollutant in heavy polluted areas and are very affected by that. Um, I don't know that to be a fact but i do think that's part of the the motion um and there's a lot of talk about different kinds of things like that and so i know that what barry said was they felt that this was um to a global issue that the studio city should not be concerned with and that it's more of a maybe the state should be concerned with it or um that it is, I don't want to put words in his mouth because it was something like, it, like basically it was a waste of time for the, the city attorney to spend time on this. Yeah. And maybe, you know, it was a better thing for them to spend time on how do we get rid of leaf blowers, which is a huge, you know, uh, bailiwick in there. Also in the, in the motion, there's a, you know, some talk about, it's not in the motion, it's in the, so there's the, the preamble, the introduction, the preamble, the the context, preamble thank you, the preamble to the to the actual motion, um, it, it, it bothered a lot of people, not just not just uh, Barry, but other people too. Go ahead, Chip. Yeah, it bothered me too. Um, I thought it was artless. It was clearly uh, cut and paste from a boilerplate from something else. That doesn't mean because I don't care for the way it was written, that I'm going to cut my nose to spite my face. Um, you know, we are bordered on the north by the 101. Our surface streets are choked and congested. Those cars idling at Coldwater and Ventura are contributing pollution. If you look at the Google Maps with ozone, you know, carbon monoxide, all the different filters you can put on those maps, Studio City actually has <clears throat> unhealthy air and it has unhealthy air and gradients throughout the community it, it gets steadily denser in terms of concentrations of toxins when you move north from ventura to the 101 freeway right and, and beyond the 101 freeway we have significant impacts you know environmental problems brought about by cars by some industry that blows in by the hardscape that is getting bigger and bigger all the time, we have a problem. It would be irresponsible. First of all, if you don't plan for something, it doesn't happen. If we don't have a plan for environmental improvement in the city charter, we're never going to get there. So it needs to be part of the city charter. Right? It's just like, it's like really all this get, all wait, this wait. motion is, can I just, all this motion is asking is for them to investigate having a climate action plan. Right. It's a 60 day turnaround. What are the benefits? What are the costs? And do we have access to, as a result of having a climate action and adaptation plan, do we have access to other funding we may not otherwise have access to? If there is money, and I'm making this up because I don't know, that's I do. why I want them to go find and tell me. I do. So the state, it's many years ago now, it's more, more than a handful of years ago, the state made it clear that they are incentivizing to encourage local jurisdictions to incorporate climate action and adaptation plans into their general plan documents. We are behind schedule in updating our general plan, and we need to include a climate action and adaptation plan. The state is encouraging local jurisdictions through financial and other incentives, which at some point will turn into penalties if you don't, 
They're encouraging local jurisdictions to do it because you get people saying the state can't tell me what to do. Yeah, you're right. The state is very different. All communities and counties are different. We're, we're the most diverse sort of regional geographic state around there and different regions need to determine the actions that are, that are particular to their areas. So they're giving us the agency to determine what actions we need to take to mitigate and adapt to climate impacts. And that happens through the general plan process. And those are inclusive uh, participatory processes. We just need to get off our butt and do it. And that's what this is initiating. Scott, did you find something? Yeah, I don't have Barry's, he hasn't submitted the final motion, but it was just basically in opposition with not much of an explanation. I don't want to read something that was that's not entirely correct, but it was that the Board of the City of City of the Neighborhood Council opposes council file and and more information on the council file. The discussion <coughs> about the opposition went into the makeup of the council file motion. Your motion, Adele, actually makes sense to me, and it sounds great. It's not what uh, is it, Katie? Does she pronounce it, Katie or Caddy? Caddy. Katie. 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 Uh, it's not what she wrote. Uh, I, I can tell you, if Sam Yerby, it's won, staff. By the way, it wasn't Katie. It was staff. Yeah. It's it's. I I I mean, I think the motion is pretty much incoherent. I think the last paragraph is fine. I think your motion is clear and succinct, and it should be the council file as well. What you wrote and what everyone else has said right now makes sense. But if you read what what what's what's written here, I mean, with the uh, communities of color, regardless of income and power plants, and they mix and merge county statistics with city statistics. Uh, it just goes on and on about asthma and in children. And it's the study that she's citing uh, makes no such claim whatsoever. In fact, we're all seeing on the news today that over 12% of asthma in children is caused by gas stoves. And that's disputed because of the people with gas stoves, uh, mothers who smoke uh, when they're pregnant is a contributor, a major contributor to asthma as is genetics as his diet, as- Okay, his, so anyway, the, as you always point me, out- uh, uh, Melanie. Wait, 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 wait. Melanie, let, him... let me Let me finish my thought, okay? I'm explaining about the two competing motions uh, that I think Adele wants to hear because this is going to be discussed in great detail when it comes to the board with two competing motions, one up, one down. Uh, so anyway, that's what the discussion was. Uh, pretty much was the structure and content and folder all, if you will, of uh, Katie's motion versus what your motion is. So if you can frame that in a way that addresses the last paragraph of Katie's motion with the problem that people have with 90% of Katie's motion, I think you'll, uh, you'll score a victory. Thank you. Um, I just want to say that the preamble, if you will, of Katie's, of the motion actually is not part of the motion itself. The motion itself is, I hereby make a motion that there be this, that there be this investigation. That's the motion. All the rest of it except for the preceding paragraph where the, she talks about how other it, it, you know, it's kind of, I mean, it is gobbledygook and it's really ridiculous. And, uh, but I don't think that that has, I think it has more to anyway, I don't know what it has to do with, but I think that the true nature of that motion is pretty clear in what she's asking the city to do. And the rest of it's like, ugh, whatever. So it doesn't bother me. I, I don't, I'm not bothered by that. And maybe that I can chip, maybe you should speak to that yourself too. Oh, Did you have your hand up? Melanie had hers up oh, first. Oh, I'm sorry. Melanie, go ahead. 
That's okay. I'll just say, Scott, this is something that you've raised in both board meetings and committee meetings about the only thing that's important here is the I therefore move. And I have to tell you, I cannot enumerate how many council motions I've seen that are more insane than this before <laughs> and, and all the preamble stuff before they get to the I therefore move. It's gotten, you know, it's an opportunity for people to throw all kinds of stuff at the wall to sound like they know everything. The, the spelling errors, the syntax errors, the grammar errors, the, the fluff. It's just, you learn to sort of scan right through it and get to the I therefore move. And I've heard you, Scott, make similar comments about things that we put out there and things that we're reviewing in the past. So if this does come up as we are, as the board is reviewing two competing motions, it, it, it would probably help as the president if you preface this by saying, you know, all the stuff at the top pisses some people off, makes people uncomfortable, whatever. They disagree with the stuff at the top. The only thing that really is binding here and that we're acting on is everything after I therefore move, hmm. right? The rest of it is completely irrelevant. It, it isn't binding. It doesn't go into law. It's not saying this is why at the end of the day, this is simply directing departments to go and look at something. That's what they'll do, et cetera, et cetera. And really, I mean, I've had some outrage moments and some hilarity over the endless mistakes in council motions over the years. Um, it's kind of embarrassing, but here we are. So I hope we can focus on just the, the substance of this and this community's understanding of what that means and our and how we choose to act on the everything after I therefore move. And that's all I wanted to say. Thanks, Melanie. Chip? We all agree there's a bright, shiny, distracting object that we shouldn't pay attention to. and We're talking it to death. Could we please just move forward on this motion, which addresses the important question of, is there an advantage to put a climate action and adaptation plan into the city charter? I mean, into the city um, general plan. I'm horrified it's not there. I believe it needs to be there. And I think there's money that will come. Go find it and come back to me in 60 days. I think that's appropriate. Agreed. So any I other move discussion? That we any, adopt this. Any other discussion? Call for a vote. Call, call for a vote. Call for a vote. Calling for a vote. Going back to the top. Oh. Adele. Yes. Thank Alexander Black. Yes. Chris Trent. No. Susan Chalbe. Yes. Jesse Sanford. Yes. Chip Meehan, yes. Melanie Winter. Yes. Tony Knight not here, Andrew Epstein not here, Scott Mandel. Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven yeses, one no. And yes. two uh, absent. And two absent. Mm -hmm. Great. The motion passes. Awesome. Now. And and let's talk between now and the meeting about how it's going to be introduced. This is an int Scott, have you had two, two opposing? I've witnessed it, but certainly not since June. That's something that should be discussed, like you mentioned before. And I would also have in mind, or you may want to have in mind, uh, a possible amendment that does what Melanie says, and what you said, and what most of you have said, that the I therefore move is what you're focusing on. And you could maybe put in a clever sentence that says, with, you know, without commenting on or disregarding the first one, two, three, four paragraphs of the motion, we support the conclusion or something along those lines 
so people are not going to focus on the shiny object because uh, I'm not speaking for myself. I'm speaking also for the target audience. We've seen this happen before, and that's where the conversation will be at the board meeting, and this will get shredded to pieces because of the stuff you don't want to look at and put in a clever sentence. I voted yes because I want this to go before the board. Let them both battle out. But you have one, two, three, four paragraphs of absolute and complete and total nonsense and one, four lines of quality merchandise. And I would have in the back of your head a way to address that. Otherwise, the other- Well, do you think it should be addressed in the motion or addressed when we, when we uh, present it? <clears throat> Probably both. But, well, we'd have to do it now because we can't. Well, you could just have it in your mind as an amendment. Oh, there, I see. There, there are plenty of times where what passes in committee, just get it to the board, right? And then once you read the motion, uh, you can then offer an amendment if you want, if you feel the room that way. Uh, uh, Barry's motion was first. His committee was first. His will be presented first. So there's a possibility his will pass. Well, can't you, you should present them together. Well, I'm going to have to find out the best way to handle that. Yeah. Well, you, you get to schedule which committees are heard in what order at the board meetings. So that's up to you. Sure. And, they, and so because transportation like meets every month and government affairs meets every month before sustainability, unless there's some sort of, not rule necessarily, but encouragement that when issues like this that come up that are clearly sustainability related um are are dealt with jointly that there has to be a better process than well he did his first and so you know yeah that's, yeah, that's kind of not okay it's crossing into our territory and then we end up having this weird battle if we don't have rules around what is government affairs versus what is sustainability, then we have to at least have convivial understandings about how we should be working together or how competing motions at the end of the day, if we can't work together, are presented. I think competing motions have to be presented together, otherwise it's not fair. It's just not fair. They're not, they're not voted on together. One gets voted on before the other. And I go in the order of the committee because it's very rare that two committees uh, pick the same topic. It's uh, happened, I think, once before that I know of, maybe twice. So regardless, you can't present two at the same time and vote on two at the same time. I can mention- You should be able to, you should be, I mean- It'll be, a, be, it'll be on the agenda. So in a, yeah, but in a in a proper discourse, you should be able to present each motion and then let people hear the full discussions of both and then make a decision given whether they want to vote for one or the other. Because otherwise it's not fair. Well, actually, couldn't somebody move to to suspend voting on the government affairs? Yeah motion until after the sustainability position was or heard. vice versa or vice versa yeah i mean since the board will know that both motions are out there so at the time it's done government affairs states their case because g comes before s right so if we even went alphabetically <laughs> right <clears throat> You know, I was hoping it was transportation because S comes before T and then I'd stick with that. But since it doesn't work for me, I'm not going to. All right. So we end up having and we just suspend a vote until after the other discussion from the from the other committee with a competing point of view. Yeah. Once it's on the floor, uh, it's on the floor and it goes to a vote. If it goes off, it doesn't come back on. So no, you can suspend. To... You can suspend the vote until some until further information. You absolutely can. Don't make me go get my Robert's book. Yeah, of we're gonna get. We're gonna bring it out there's, on you, man. The, the, there's the, you can table something if something else urgent comes up, but there you cannot. Once it's presented, there's. So the, you table it. You can come. That means you come back to it within the meeting. That's what tabling means. Tabling doesn't mean you're tabling it till another day. No, ta tabling means there's something more pressing in time, like someone has to leave and catch a flight. 
and you go to something else. <laughs> Make sure that's the right version. They're all different. We're bound by version 11. So, I mean, we don't we don't want to get into a into a Robert's rules, but trust me, I mean, you're free to research it between now and then, but once it is like a branded on speed dial. Once it's presented, it gets moved. Yeah, all that, branded. <laughs> good luck. <laughs> uh, see, this is what 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 a possible result is 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 it gets voted back to committee. And then the two committees are, are have a joint meeting and they hash it out. That's a that's a possible outcome. But to have it presented and discussed and then paused, and then another one is presented and discussed and paused, uh, I'm 99% sure there is no provision for something like that. I think what I would love is if because this may be something that occurs more and more frequently. Um you know, if we don't have sort of guidance that when these things clearly cross committee interests, a conversation should be had prior to any committee meeting. Um, this will continue to recur. Um, trust me. And we don't want this eating our neighborhood council alive. So let's try to find a way to mm -hmm. congenially establish procedures to deal with this. Well, I think when the when Barry sends out his agendas or any committee sends out their agendas, they go to everybody and you glance at the agenda and go, oh, I think that's something we should do. And then the committee chairs discuss the possibility of a joint uh, meeting to handle the issue. Yeah, that's, but that didn't happen. Well, well it's too late now to... It's, it's, it's too late now, but there is, there is fair warning of when there is going to be something that could cross over. And there is no, we don't have any defining rule that a committee is not allowed to. Uh, nor sort of, should you, nor should we you. We don't, but I will say that under the last president, we had our hand, sustainability had their hands slapped for bringing a motion that they, after we had it agendized and after we voted on it and brought it to the board, we publicly had our hands slapped saying that should properly have gone to Barry. We're not even gonna entertain this. I mean, in a public freaking forum, well, it says right here on page so, 11, Barry should roll over. I'm pretty sure. There you I'm go. Let's just stick right, with that. I'm pretty sure that's what this says. I might be reading it wrong. I, I was instrumental in changing our bylaws and operating procedures that if a committee passes a motion or a board member brings forth a motion, it gets on the agenda and gets discussed. There is no presidential veto. That's absurd. And whatever... Uh, motion you're talking about that may have happened in the past regime that does not happen anymore. It's uh, it it it's not it it just seems unfair. It, so, it was. I just don't want to end up end up um, you know pushing some pressure levers so that we end up in a similar kind of no. That's that, that's not that's not happening again. There's there's competing there's competing motions and actually they can both pass. So we could have a council, we could have a motion in support of and a motion in That's opposition. That's true. To. You could, they could. So vote I mean, it's there, there, there is, there is no rule for every inevitable possibility. Only that I implore everybody to first do your research for the hot lists, the hot sheets, and grab that council file and agendize it if it's something of interest. I know yeah. Barry's always feeding council files to everybody because he reads every single hot list, a uh, hot sheet. As I'm just I. surprised he took this one because, well, how is this government affairs? Legislation. Oh. And it's an amendment of the- Well, that's half of the motions that we pass, um, but I, I, I think- that, <laughs> Almost all of them. Yeah, almost all of them. I mean, it was kind of a stretch for Barry to pick this up. But he did, so now we got to figure yeah. it out. Yeah. Yeah. Now, does Barry I, I know that we're likely to? He does know we're doing it. I, yeah, he, knows. he called me and I, he, and he I posted told him the I agenda. He sees all the agendas. But I think I think the the yeah. bit about the city's general plan uh, covers government affairs. It's not like just some type of uh, standalone piece of. Uh, it could have been land use. Sure. It could have been land use. It's, it could be sustainability. It could be almost any committee. So. It's for, Planning and land use management on the motion, the council file anyway. There you go. Mm -hmm. 
So it's more land use or well, I yeah. think it's sustainability, but it's it is land use and it's where sustainability overlaps into land use as it relates to our ability to sustain. Yeah, yeah. maybe so it's it more to, ours than his, but you know, maybe whatever. we should do it again. Maybe when it comes back from the city attorney and the climate emergency mobilization office. I mean, we get another bite at the apple, but look, let's, like I said, if if you, you can make public comment and board comment when that motion is up and say, we have a competing motion and we are proposing this and I'm recommending you vote this one down and vote ours up because of this reason. And he can say, there's one coming after me. I want you to vote for mine. I don't want you to vote for the next one for these reasons. So you will still be able to uh, articulate your case. Yeah. both yeah. ways. And yeah. if they both cancel each other out and they both pass or they both fail or someone comes up with a motion to send it back to the back to committee for a joint meeting. Got it. I mean, there's a lot of options, but I can't, I can't, I'm not smart enough to write if this, then that, when committees are fighting over their commission of, or who gets the, the finder's fee for a, a council file motion. I don't want to fight. I want to work together. Yeah. Okay. So uh, can we move Sorry on? Sorry to ramble on. Let's move on to uh Discussion of how to conserve and preserve the oak and walnut woodland, a sensitive natural habitat along the south side of the LA River between Colfax and Tahunga in Studio City. If you read the, this was triggered by a proposed development at 11601 Ventura Boulevard. Um, there is a report from Diana Nicole that's quite extensive. Um, and then there, uh, then I have some issues, but before I go to that, let me just see where my thing is. I would like to share my screen again. And this time it's not going to be words. So I went there, I went to this piece of property uh, twice, once with Scott and Chip, and once with my husband who has a pretty good camera. And we took photographs here. Let me just make that small. Um, so this is the beginning of the, of the walk on the wash. There's a, a very mature, wonderful black walnut there. Um, and you can see all of these are, um, this is along the beginning of the walk. And you can see those are uh, California live oaks and under it is, um, what did you call that? That's uh, native grasses, right? Um, so I'm going there. And then this is the next co uh, copse of trees is a bunch of pine trees. And they, as they're they're growing into the side of the hill, not a very nice oak, oaks, pine, oaks and pines. I think that's might be another black walnut. There's some black walnuts in there with the um, pine tree. I mean the oaks. This tree is crazy. I don't. Th What's that tree you said that one, uh, Chip? Uh, I don't recall what this was. It was not a, it was, it's, um, I don't this, know, the, I this isn't the elm, was it? Yeah, it might be the elm. That's right. Um, there you got some, again, black walnuts with oaks. This is all walking down along the way. There am I with my dog. And you can see how it's all along. That's a whole strip along here of all oaks. Um, I'm going to get to, oh, that's not the spot. That's a really kind of amazing oak there. Um, this is in the, a part of the where the land um, where the um, developer or the person who owns the land actually uh, moved the the their uh, the edge of their property is all is developed. Most of it's not like that, but this one was. And these are these oaks along, look at that oak is amazing. 
um, along this wall here, which is comes down. And then it goes back up again. Let me see, is this where the, um, yeah, right here is the edge of the property that I was talking about that they want to develop, they want to take out all, so all these trees here would come out that they want to take out. See, and, and we got up closer to these trees. They want to take them out. Oh, I was, that picture is, these are black walnuts here, mm -hmm. but they're dormant. So you can't, they're not, and they're, they are growing at angles, but they're actually quite fine. I think you'd need a biologist to say if they were not. Um, and then this, this is, they want to take out these trees here. Um, and then you can see from here all the way down here, it's all these oaks and walnuts. And that's Tahunga in the background, right? Yeah. And that's now yeah. that's Colfax. Yeah, that's Tahunga. That's towards Tahunga, right? And that's yeah, and that's towards Colfax. And wait a minute, why don't I get some more? These are some more of the trees along the back, along towards the towards the um <laughs> towards uh that that's an old, that's a black walnut there and that's a live oak and then um so this is also black walnut there oaks oaks lots of oaks i mean that's a black walnut there um now this tree it is humongous i would say it could be between 150 and 300 years old it's so big that is huge um, yes yeah, we went down there there's a bunch like that adele is pointing out that are absolutely natively occurring and then there's a number of other where like <laughs> some of those oaks and some of those pines she showed it looks based on the fact that they're fairly uniform in size and fairly uniform in you, their can't, you actually can't say that because birds all the time plant them and you and the truth is is that if once you say that they're not naturally occurring they're endangered by being they can be cut out for no reason at all so i would not go down that road and the um the arborist that did the report for the the <clears throat> the tahunga place um actually uh, indicated that they were naturally occurring. Those trees are naturally occurring. So I wouldn't, I would not go down that road of saying that they were planted um, because that actually endangers them. The tree, the protected tree ordinance says that if they are, they're only protected if they're naturally occurring. But even if they're protected, they can still be taken out on a whim. Well, the protected so tree there's ordinance. there's no real is not, protection. No, the, the protection that we have to get is that they are not they are not categor that that is a natural um uh habitat it's an oak and walnut woodland and it's a natural habitat that's how big it is you can see how big it is and it has to be categorically not exempt and if we can get that piece of land not exempt categorically because it is a naturally occurring uh oak and walnut woodland and uh, because of that, then they have to do a review and they'll have to protect it. That there is, um, when it's not categorically exempt, there are more protections for trees, for protected, you know, for oak, for oak and um, with them, uh, walnuts. I would also like, if it's possible for Susan and um, Chris to do what they did, uh, I mean, maybe not as extensive, but what they did over at, uh, Weddington at the at that spot because I mean this is when you go there it is astounding yeah the, I've never been down there has everyone has everyone else I know Scott's going down there with the dog <clears throat> that's because he had an antisocial dog and he needed places to go where it didn't eat people <laughs> but I mean I had never gone down to that part of the river and it's just it's stunningly beautiful there's big trees on both sides particularly on the south side it's big and open. Um, it's a lot airier. It's a lot more comfortable than than other parts of the river. It reminds me more of the part of the river upstream of between Coldwater and Fulton, 
where that sort of has a different feel because it's sort of lighter. Um, but it's a really a, a lovely asset for the community. We need to find a way to do something down there more, um, execute some kind of program down there so people go down and realize that it's part of the open space of Studio City. It's really cool. So what are we doing with land use these days, Scott? Because it seems that this is a land use sustainability mix up, mash up, I guess. Funny you should ask. Uh, there was a, some type of river meeting today where the uh, elder care project on Colfax and Ventura, which is adjacent to the river, made a presentation and every jurisdiction that is responsible for the river was on and they were asking all kinds of questions. That property actually is fenced to their property line. So there's no trees and other issues that has to change as far as the slope. And as you proceed towards Tahunga, many of the properties there are 25 feet or so off of their property line because of the slope. So as the property Adele was discussing, uh, there it's about 25 feet of property that they own that they haven't used because of the slope. And with the construction of the, it's a three-story, I believe it's a restaurant medical uh, spa and- uh, It's a uh, medical spa. Um... Uh, office and, buildings and, and, a and, restaurant, and a restaurant, but also it's got, they want to go, the reason they want to take out the trees, I, when I looked at the, at the drawings, is that they um, are going to build, I think, a, either one, a 20, go down 26 feet into the ground for a parking structure. It's actually a, one of those stacking ones where they stack the cars somehow. And uh, what, why they want to take out those trees is there's going to be a stairway from the parking structure up at least that's what it looked like to me in the drawings plus they have I, that, that big tree that's in the parking lot now on the other side of their fence. and it's amazing tree actually it probably could be declared a historic landmark um so they're they're not ready to present yet uh perhaps the next meeting i think we were waiting for some more information about the tree report and such before we uh have them present we were waiting for some more information we can discuss that offline but well, I, one of the things, there are some things that on the agenda, um, one of the main issues with that is that they have a 25 foot uh, setback, um, you know, which the city has waived in a lot of cases, which might actually um, allow them to save those trees, right, instead of doing, uh, you know, damaging them. So there's some things that we can talk about. I suppose we should talk about it offline. But um, I was wondering just about how, what, what could we do to save that piece of land? Um, um, and I had a, a couple of possible actions, but um, maybe we could discuss, maybe Melanie has some ideas about that. She's got her hand raised. Melanie? Sorry, it took me a second to get the unmute button. I was just going to ask before I get to that. It's going to ask Scott. Um, you had, I believe, you got information on exactly where the property line is, and that's something that, if we're going to be making the case for tree preservation here and getting, a, you know, a good survey and getting some other folks to document stuff, having those property lines along that stretch would be useful to us all. I'm wondering if you can share. Sure. Because when, there's county, you mean there's county yeah, land, we walk, the city county delineations and the parcels and all that kind of stuff. So there's, of, of course, from the channel upwards to the white poles, which many of them are removed with through vandalism, is the county and the county generally won't go past those white poles. Then there's the area between the white pole and where the all those businesses and properties have their actual fences. And the first one on the corner at Colfax, their fence is at the property line. And I don't, I don't believe, uh, with the exception of one, all the others are fenced or built to an area of the slope that's usable without going down the slope. So like I said, 
the one that Adele was speaking, there's 25 feet down slope that they're going to use. And it's different as you continue all the way down towards Tahunga. I was able to see the overlay from Public Works and it's pretty incredible uh, the variance of what, what looks like what would be a property line and what actually is. And the encouragement from the county is sort of, they, they would actually prefer people to build up to their property line because if they don't, then there's a gap where the county ends and then there's a no man's land that is in the city, but it's private property, but it's not fenced. So that would be a corridor for uh, just environmental destruction and, uh, and and such. I don't know if, if is that making sense? I'm, it I'm is, but uh, their other alternative is to you know negotiate a transfer of of ownership if if it's not pop, if it's not wise to build up to the property line, which in many cases it's not. Um, but you know, why think about nuance? Um, and I will also say, after years of looking <coughs> at when it comes to the river and the easement and the delineation of property lines, you would, I don't know, either roll on the floor laughing or want to pull your hair out or put a gun to your head. If you look at the existing property maps just between Radford and Witsit, or Rad Radford and Coldwater, along the Los Angeles River, and where they say property lines are as opposed to what is thin air, what is a street, it's pretty hilarious. So it, it can be kind of negotiable and fungible in a way because they don't line up to build infrastructure and reality in many cases because of the transfer from hand-drawn maps to digital and all the hiccups that happened in the intervening years. Um, but if they're if they're going to go off of something, we should at least know what they're going off of. Um, so that's something to... There know. are survey markers on the sites. That's helpful. And also they, so you're saying that the, the county doesn't really want them to have that, wouldn't want us to preserve that land with those trees on it? We're supposed to have setbacks too. So that's yeah. it's a weird thing to have to hear the county say, please build a wall up to the property line. Um, yeah, I don't believe that. Especially that. up against what's supposed to be an open space greenway. They're just- And they're also just re there's a, the whole Rio thing. There's- yeah. They'd mm -hmm. have to get a lot of exceptions to build into that hill. Frickin' engineers, man. Anyway, uh, sorry. When you start at Colfax, the, the first property where Jinkies is, they're building, uh, they're going to build a retaining wall right on their property line uh, as far as where they actually build the structure and those setbacks go. That's a whole other thing. But I was talking about the, the property line and not fencing or, or, or retaining. Uh, Chip and Adele, when we were there, remember that other uh, building with a very solid wide wall that's built right to the, so they, they can go and that went right up to the white poles. Yeah, so, it's a public storage. Was that the business? It, I, I, I don't, now now I don't remember. Or Van Dome? One was the, um, that was one the was where the gym was. Yeah, where yeah, CrossFit, Van Dome. Yeah. yeah. But, but let me try to clarify what I understood from the county. It's not that they want people to build retaining walls, is that they didn't want a no man's land of where the county property ends and there's open, an open space that they can't maintain and the private property owner won't maintain. And then there's just, it's like I said, it's no man's land. It's, it's, it's private property unfenced, un, unmaintained, unused. So that's that's the issue, as I understood it. That makes sense? It does, well, except if someone's going to build, it doesn't have to stay in no man's land. They can always transfer property rights over to the county to expand the greenway in exchange for X, Y, and Z, is all I was saying. It's silly to encourage building into a floodplain when you could simply say, yeah, that wouldn't make sense or wouldn't be safe, or yeah, you want to build it there, not there we can transfer the, the remainder property over to the county. And then it does become in their purview. Do you hear what I'm saying? Sure, but the, the, yeah. the property with the trees that we just saw, they're going to the property line. Well, they think they are. Do we want them to? 
No, that's they, the question. They, they, Do we want them to? They don't have to. Is it wise to? They don't, ha they don't have to. And to, ha to hear the county encourage them to is it, disappointing. It's not an encouragement. It's it's they they prefer not to have a no man's land. But you didn't hear what I was saying. It doesn't have to be a no man's land. It can be transferred to the county from the private property owner. Right. In exchange for X, Y, and Z, or whatever, because it's a function. In exchange plan. for, uh, you know, that twenty-five foot setback in the front. It oh, provides okay. ecosystem services. It is a floodplain, et cetera. I mean, there's a lot of ways to think about this if you're not a civil engineer looking to, you know, make your life. It, you want to preserve those trees. It's a central, sensitive natural habitat. So we want to preserve that. Right. We want to create. You know, it's it's on the Rio. It's probably there are some great species that live in the in the unless the homeless people have eaten them. Um, you know, so there's a lot there's a lot of reasons to preserve that land. The the question would be, uh, Mr. or Mrs. Property Owner, if you give this land to the county and the county accepts it, City of Los Angeles, will you uh, forgive? The setback if the person gives the land to the county. It'd be a tough, I mean, I understand what you're saying. I don't know how we as the neighborhood council would would orchestrate or present that type of a of a land swap in exchange for this the 20 foot or so, whatever the setback is off into a boulevard, which we is just raise it. <laughs> we well, just raise the, the issue. The city is is uh uh uh, waiving the dedications of, uh, for under certain conditions. They are already doing that. So it's not unheard of. And also they are asking for exceptions from the Rio transitional height and the specific plan uh, uh, FAR. And they're blaming their hardship on the dedication requirement, but this is self-imposed because they're trying to build too much on a very small piece of land. So there's a lot of, you know, there's a, there's a lot of wiggle room in there. And they're not building affordable housing. So they're not, they don't get those exemptions, right? So there's a lot of stuff to look at. Assuming a cooperative property owner. Right. Where they would just say, hey, I'm building there. Sorry my property well they can't do that because they have to get the exceptions in order to build there they have to get those exceptions the rio exception they can't just build there period full stop so they have to come talk to us and we they have, have to come talk list. to us because they need exceptions and they can't get so you know we're we'll say hey look we want to keep we want to preserve that not sensitive natural habitat we want you to move your building over and not go into the hillside Besides the fact, I don't know about digging. I, I still think, you know, the, the river right now is almost at the top. I just got a text from Peter and Patrice. It's almost right, at the top, that. right? And what's going to happen when, the, the, you know, their garage floods? Because they're not building a garage like a boat, like Sportsman's is. So there's, there are a lot of engineering problems with all the stuff that people want to do along the river. There are a lot, and it's going to, we're going to have a sinking city here. It's going to sink into the freaking ocean. Well, I, I, I'm fine with this being a land use issue for this property if we jointly discuss it with sustainability and come up with something as a team effort. So I would, Adele, uh, pass the, the city planning file with all of the information. Yeah, you know what, they the, the city planners took all the files down. Did you see that? I've got nope. to write this. They took them all down. For, for for the one you just showed us the pictures of? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, they're all they all they took them all down. They're all down. I I uh I've got to write the city planner and say what what the f. I wonder if it's when when the when the year changes that they take them all down and put them back up again, which seems ridiculous, but I, I don't know. But I went to look and they're all down. Okay. Yeah. Well, when they're back up, I would distribute them to your committee and then we can come up with a joint meeting where the sustainability issues of the river can be discussed with the- land. But I would really like to work on how can we make that whole strip of land sort of protected? Is that something we could do? Chip, do you have some thoughts? 
I do, and you guys are both saying and dancing around what I was going to say. I do believe this needs to be uh, sustainability and land use. I think we need to reach out to CD4 and say that this is a huge asset which is underutilized. We need to find a way to get more programs executed down there. And, you know, Nithya, you could have a parade of children behind you and get it on camera, whatever you want, but we need to get folks down there to see that that is an, unutil an underutilized open space asset in the community that is currently being threatened because this Coenga Ventura specific plan rethink is having all of these lots that really have been eyesores or not very valuable for the past 20 years are suddenly catching people's interest. And that whole area from Marshalls going west um, to Colfax, which is really, I mean, Jinkies was by itself. I mean, it was the only restaurant, well, the restaurant that was there beforehand was um, the shrimp restaurant, right? Killer shrimp, but that went out of business. I mean, it was been a difficult place for any business to survive there. Now there is greater attention being paid to it. And I think we need to get Nithia's office paying attention to the fact that we think there are assets there that are potentially at risk. We'd like to have an umbrella policy for the region. What are her thoughts? That's all I got. I think it's probably good that we don't blame it on the specific plan. It's, I think I see it as an, a benefit. That whole stretch is nothing but auto body shops. Having a specific plan that encourages something other than freaking auto body shops is a good thing. You know, adding other things and being clear about what we want to see there and what we don't mm -hmm. to enliven that stretch of Ventura Boulevard rather than create other you know, other ways to have a Great Wall of China and a and, and blight, which that latest development seems to be like a piece of blight. Um, we just need to say, yes, we would like different land uses here and we want a lively boulevard here. And we want to recognize that, you know, the, the Greenway is an asset and should be considered in all developments rather than ignored in all developments. And, mm -hmm. you know, articulate it a little more clearly rather than just say, we don't like the specific plan because it's encouraging development. I mean, for God's sake, for as long as I've lived here, I've you know wanted to see that stretch transitioned from Tony Lucente and I tried 25 years ago to get a queue condition on that reach of Ventura Boulevard to not allow continued auto body uses there. It's just it's been a, a thing. And so the, the thing that we, the, the fact that we have a chance to see that transform mm -hmm. in the next decade is great. It's just transform to what I think is how we should frame this. And, and let's have some priorities. But I do think that if Hackman wants to get on board to help us to expand the scope of the Greenway um, charrette and visioning beyond Laurel to Witsit and to take it from Tahanga to Coldwater, then we can have these kind of conversations and that would be phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Who are you saying would get on board? What? Hackman Capital, the new owner of Radford Studios. Oh. If they would like to be a funding partner and, you know, throw in the additional resources needed to expand the scope of the, the Greenway, Charette, and Studio City Visioning that we're supposed to be doing sometime this year, um, that would be phenomenal. Got it. That's interesting. Is that thing you think that's possible, uh, Chip? You have your hand up still. I don't know if you, that's old. It's something we talked about with them um, a couple weeks ago. Well, a month ago now, I guess, maybe. Um, but I would love a follow up on that. Mm -hmm. They have the resources, certainly, and they have an interest in a happy community and a revisioned community. So. Yeah. Um, Susan, do you think you could go down there and just see what you could see? 
Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, mainly what I could find would be birds, probably because, you know, oak canopy to try to get anything other than. Uh, I mean, there are, you know, 350 species in that are supported in oak trees, but I mean, those are tall, you would need, you know, to do sweet netting. I mean, that's not something I would be doing, and this isn't the right time of year, but I could certainly do birds and see how, how long a section is it. I can't, I couldn't really tell from what you're. It is long. <laughs> that's a quarter it, mile, right? Yeah. Oh, it is. Okay. Between... I wasn't sure. Okay. No, I think it's fine. longer than that. It, from Colfax to Tahunga feels longer than Whitsit to Coldwater. Okay. I mean, I can do that. I, I don't know that that would particularly support anything, but I'll be happy to do it. Um, you know, there's lists of what species are supported by oak trees. That's, you know, something that's available without anyone doing a survey. But I think the bird thing would be good. There's oaks, pines, which I believe are native. And, well, they're Monterey's, I think. And there are walnuts. There's not much in the way of a shrub understory. Right. So there's not a lot of diversity of, of habitat. Yeah. Um, which is why I'm not saying it looks like it was part of a tree planting, perhaps as far back as 1984. I went and looked, I did research on tree planting programs. There was none. You know, if you had- There was the million tree something or something, but that wouldn't be it. What, yeah, ahead. if there was an understory there, you would have a lot more wildlife too. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's something we would want to take a look at because I mean, there's a way to really, you know, particularly with mature tree canopy, we could put a bunch of stuff in there that would be pretty happy. Although it gets sheltered, on that southern side, on the northern side, the neighborhood has sort of encroached on kind of people's gardens that roll down onto the uh, the the river. walkway by the river on that side, and it's like bougainvillea and stuff like that. Maybe some vegetables, um, but it's pretty well planted over there. But the southern side's not not really plant. The understory's not planted, not particularly. Right. It just looks like it was some grasses that were put yeah, in. Yeah, it looked like I saw a toy on, but other than that, yeah, it's there just, was one yeah. toy on for sure. Yeah, it wasn't overly planted at all. Um, but, but a toy it, could have been brought in by a bird, right? That sounds like bird poop to me. Now you're getting it. <laughs> Actually, probably was. Um, okay. So, um, so I guess uh, we're going to kick this back to uh, be a land use, but that particular that that particular um, development will be a land use sustainability one. But I still would like to figure out how we could. I mean, what do you think the next step is, Chip? Is to go to Nitya and say we want to protect this greenway it's an asset and we want yeah to i don't think I, I think multiple things can happen in concert um but i think that if we don't declare that we want to preserve this section of the river because it is a studio city river park asset if we don't identify it as a thing if it doesn't have a brand if it doesn't have a value, if it doesn't have a value and you take away from it, there's no loss, right? If we declare it a public asset of value with great opportunity for improvement and enhancement and recognition, then it's got an upside. Then you don't wanna start losing it to development if you're Nithia because there's an upside. And so she need, we need to, declare it to be something of value and ask for her help in protecting it. And then we'll find out where that particular source of support comes from. I think at the same time that Melanie and everyone else that's been working with the business stakeholders can figure out where we are with that simultaneously 
and see what's going on. I mean, and you know, my guess is we're going to have different combinations of stakeholders along all those sections, like to Hunga to Colfax. I've been here since 40 years almost, um, and I've never been over there, right? But that's different. Like there's a pretty active group of homeowners on the North Shore and on the South Shore, you have all these evolving businesses. Um, some of them might be interested in, in declaring themselves something. And then you start going Colfax to, to Laurel, you kind of run into Hackman's there with Radford, but there's some other businesses somewhere along the river. And then you end up with like that whole Hoffman area. Um, Melanie, what do you call that area that you had done between Radford and Laurel? Is there a name? Hoffman Grove, kind of. Because that's a cool area of the river that actually is being used by neighbors, but mm -hmm. that needs a refresh, mm -hmm. which would take some money, but perhaps you could help us with that. And then you've got the perennial rock in my shoe, which is from Laurel to Witsit. And, you know, that South side has been uh, right. so, that back in the early 1900s. Yeah, I did. Um, so just, then, just for context, we did a studio charrette, right, back in 1997. Um, when I was running Folar, we did a, we had a dozen architects and landscape architects in, and we did a three-day studio charrette. And Mike, Hack, Mike, Mike, oh gosh, oh. thank you hosted us at CBS. And um, we did the entirety of, of, of Studio City and picked like a half a dozen sites. And, and this was before the parking structure was built. Um, so the proposal basically is to take and redo that, but, you know, do a, a update the visioning for the river as it runs through Studio City, including the confluence. and work with the business community and as well as the neighborhood council, as well as the resident association, as well as everybody. And that's the proposal to have community and professionals and business owners and everybody working together to look at what the opportunities are for moving forward with the river and the river business interface and the connectivity. And we do have funding for to do that, but just for the Laurel to Witsit stretch. And it's been held up by the pandemic and the tr transition from one council rep to another and now waiting for other funding and blah, 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 blah. But um, yeah, this would be to take the money that we do have to bring in additional resources to make it a bigger vision. Um, and this is a good way to sort of augment um, and to have another lever, I guess, if you will, with the community plan update before that's finalized. So that's the proposal. We'll see if they bite. But so I need to, why don't I just fire off a quick email to George from CD4 and see if he responds. Okay. You know, and while I'm doing that too, I'll tell them that we had uh, a concerned resident ask about two cycle mowers and blowers. <laughs> okay, great. All right, so I'll hit him with both of those. Okay, awesome. Um, and I'll ask him about the river and, and where does he see that. Um, And, and those, like I said, those, don't overwhelm him this week, Chip. Everybody's going. It's the first week council's back. It's the first week of a new half the new council. Yeah, um, that's why it's by rain issues. Days. Wait, wait till next week, and yeah. And we'll see what's left after the storm. Scott, I already have an email into uh, CD four regarding blowers. Before I was on the board, I convinced Sherman Oaks Neighborhood Council and this Neighborhood Council to uh, <clears throat> pass a motion for uh, council member Krikorian at the time to amend the municipal code for uh, gas powered leaf blowers to internal combustion uh, leaf blowers. And Paul knew about, uh, council member Krikorian knows about it. He refers to me as the leaf blower guy every time he sees me. 
and uh, I'm going to get some FaceTime over in CD4 with their legislative person to see if now's a good time to bring it before the city council to finally enforce the ban. I'm going to send everybody a link to that piece of property. The files are back up, so you get that in a minute to see what it is we're talking about. And I have the actual physical copy with the giant uh, maps and property lines and all that stuff. So, oh, I'd like to see that. So we could, uh, I could show you that. It's much easier to see in this large format than it is online. But you'll get that link from me in, in a sec. Okay. And you know, th this is something that would be of value, I think, to actually put on one of the walls of the office of the on the Radford lot is to sit there and really put up a a better river map of Studio City. Agreed. Agreed. You know, I'll take a look at that as well. Joe Laskin thought he had some maps. I'll see if Joe can help me with that some more. Melody, do you have a high quality map? I have so many fucking maps, yes. Right, I was about to say, why am I talking to anybody else? I, I really don't know, but it sort of tends to be a habit with everybody, so whatever. <laughs> I mean, so I just, I'll just i sit we... in the background with my 30 years of experience and let everybody blather on. Well, all I can do is think about Maisie when I see the picture. So could we sit there and get a large format map that would take Fulton all the way to Tahunga? There's Without. not much we really can't do. It's just a question of, do we have the money and why are we doing it? So, you know, we, there's lots we can talk about. Okay. And yeah. I will meet with Melody as a sidebar and we'll get back to you guys next month. Okay. Okay. Uh, any other issues? Any other things people want to talk about? Yeah, I do. Um, and he was here for a while and I think we actually drove, it wasn't the zoo that drove him. He held on through the zoo, but Ivan left someplace during the uh, the other motion. Um, Ivan Castillo is a tree people um, person. He is the director of urban forestry. I don't know if they have multiple directors of urban forestry. Um, I have met him, Scott has met him a couple of times. He is the gentleman in charge of the Zev Yaroslavsky Greenway. And so he is going to, um, he has offered to join us next month and take us through probably with somebody from MRCA, which owns the property or has the overarching management contract. MRCA has subcontracted really with tree people and with Northeast Trees, and there's a division between the three entities as to what they're going to do to turn the north side of the river from Whitsit to Coldwater into sort of the, um, the prime example of what they would like to do and sort of make this kind of a walk through best practices garden. Um, and from when I was speaking to him, getting excited with the very enlightened ways that he's looking at, you know, uh, holistic ecology, native plants. I mean, stuff you didn't always hear uh, tree people get credit for, because at one point there was no tree they didn't like, and there was bizarre stuff that they stuck in that just didn't fit with the local environment. Now they seem pretty committed. Well, the forestry, the one corner of tree people does at least, yes. Okay. Um, when I was down there, there was a tree that fell and Scott and Peter and I went down with my little chainsaw and loppers and lopped that up and cleared the trail um, last week. Um, I spoke to Ivan about that, who was on break between Christmas and New Year's. So we did that for them. Um, his people were down with clipboards and binoculars walking up and down the Zev doing an inventory of plants and and critters. And at that point I said, well, Susan's been doing this for a while. So without her permission, and thank you for being so gracious, Susan, I introduced Susan to Ivan by email. And so they're gonna end up having some citizen scientist uh, collaboration there. Some of the things that Ivan's talking about doing is having, I did, 
sort of arboretum quality tags that say this is a Toyin. There'd be a QR code underneath it, which will take you through uh, various different uh, content about a Toyin. So you could really get deep into it, or you could just have kind of a um, an enhanced arboretum kind of a look. And so there's some cool stuff we can do without stealing the thunder from next week. But anyhow, Susan, thank you very much for doing the work and for being willing to share it with him. I think it's going to give them a real leg up. So, um, so tree people will be seeing us next week, next month. Great. I'll put them on the agenda. Any other notes for the agenda? I have tree blowers, leaf blowers, sorry, tree blowers, and the cleanup by the river and Ivan. Anything else? And maybe we'll... Uh... We should revisit where we're going to be from Colfax to Tahunga. Yeah, we'll have to revisit that too. Um, I'm going to work some more on what we can do to preserve that land. I really want to do that. The only other thing of interest is that we are having the ad hoc meeting on Thursday, yeah, which is the ad hoc committee that reviewed the Weddington Golf and Tennis development proposal by Harvard Westlake. Um, this started in May of last year um, as part of the DEIR comment period. Um, and so that ad hoc meeting to go through the motion um, will be Thursday in front of the whole board. The ad hoc committee has made the motion to oppose the Harvard Westlake project as currently submitted because of the artificial turf component, 12 acres or whatever it is, eight acres of plastic doesn't seem to make some sense. And also the greenhouse gas emissions by their own DEIRs three times the current um, load. And uh, also so, that you had also the noise, traffic, and lights on there. But what we also decided is since we didn't accept the property and proposal the way it is, there's no reason to talk about lights, traffic, and you know how many people are going to be able to jump in the pool if we don't agree that the pool should even exist. So we can get back to that. We also wanted just to close the paperwork on the DEIR because the the board did not have a stance yeah. in May. Yeah. This committee was a response to kick the can down the road. Um, and now we're back. Yeah. And you can, you, you, they are still, uh, the city is still accepting uh, opposition to the DEIR at this point. Or support. Or support. Yeah. The difference is that after the comment period is closed, it no longer needs to be responded to Correct. on an individual basis. Correct. Correct. So see you all Thursday. See you Thursday. And, and, uh, well, there's also a land use committee meeting on Wednesday night. Well, that means you can make it the full tri, you know, the full suite. The trifecta. <laughs> yeah, because tomorrow is SCRA at Bridges and, and Krikorian will be there. Oh, really? Oh, shit. Tomorrow night? Oh, Lordy. Bridges, SCRA? Yep. It's not going to be in the gym. They've moved it to a classroom with better acoustics. Oh, thank God. Nothing like a smaller space during the COVID, COVID spike. Yeah, sweet. Mm. Hey, who's DK, DK Noah? We have a visitor that we'd love to for you to introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. I'm a um, Studio City resident. I live um, on Camellia Avenue. Super excited to be here. Uh, I moved here last year, and I am really interested to know more about the work that this uh, committee does. So I just finally got the chance to join in on the meeting this month. Welcome. Well, yeah, welcome. welcome. After listening to us ramble on and not saying a word, you're still excited to be here. That's really encouraging. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think it's really interesting what you guys are talking about. And, um, you know, I, I have little bits of feedback, but I'm mostly here just to learn from you guys. So great. Well, and we welcome. welcome the feedback too. We're glad We'd to have love you. to cool. hear any feedback you have right now before um, we close. 
Well, I really support um, the things I heard about the um, preservation of the green space on the river. Uh, I live not far from there and I walk um, to restaurants from my house pretty regularly down on Ventura and I'd hate to see those beautiful trees go away. Hmm. Nice. Good to know. Great. Again, you, welcome. You welcome. And you're glad you're joining. How did you. you hear how did you hear about us? Um I I looked you guys up actually. I I I was just curious to know more about the kind of the scene over here. We moved from the west side in 2022. And um, West LA had a neighborhood council that I used to sit in on sometimes. Oh, cool. Yay. Well, well yeah. welcome. Wish, wish they could have done better. West LA has a lot to learn, I think, on <laughs> we all sustainability. Do. <laughs> yeah. We all do, but we're stronger together. So we're really happy to have you join us. And we hope that you continue to do so. Yeah, thank you very much. This committee is has uh, in the last two years or so has really gotten strong, and uh, we welcome everybody to come and join us. Absolutely welcome you. So that's great. Thanks. Thank thank you for your hospitality. And if you have any concerns, you can always send an email to the neighborhood council. <laughs> I, what is it? Info at whatever. Uh, I, can't, I don't know what the. Do you know what the? What, Scott, what's the email address? I'm so bad with email addresses. You're on not You're muted. muted. You're muted. You could you could just give them uh, your address for sustainability issues. Or oh yeah, if you want to write, what is my address? Oh my god. Did everybody get the email I just sent to the to the group sustainability? Yes. Did, those, yes. did that come in? Mm -hmm. Oh, so you can just give that sustainability at studiocitync.org. Oh, there you yeah. go. And there's land use at studiocitync.org and all the others. Okay, thank or you very much. Board, board at studiocitync.org. Or if you poke around on our website, uh, contact us. You'll, you'll find, if you go to the committees, you'll see our names and email addresses and such. And our calendar has all our agendas. Great, thank you. Yeah, sure. Thanks again. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank you, everyone. We... I have to sign off and now. Uh, we we're, almost... we're getting ready to end the meeting there, okay. there Alex. So okay. without, uh, do we have a motion to end the meeting? Motion to adjourn. Uh, sorry, sorry. one quick announcement, if that's okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. please. Uh, and I hate to end it on kind of a sad note, but in case anybody's interested, there is a memorial slash celebration for P22 mm -hmm. um, that's happening on February 4th at the Greek Theater. Um, you have to get tickets, apparently, at Ticketmaster, uh, which are free, but I think there's a parking fee. They're but sold out. Really? Yeah. Well, yeah, that's that's sort of a testament to how <laughs> much of an uh, icon that, that animal was. Yeah. So I guess it would be nice if somebody, you know, broadcasted or something, or there was some yeah. way for us who haven't bought tickets. I thought the tickets didn't go on sale until, oh, this is Monday. Yeah, this is Monday. Yeah, that was yeah. Not... Somebody posted on Twitter that they were already sold out. So wow, well, well, it could be it could be a ticket master glitch, but that's what I saw. Right. Wow. Well, maybe they'll extend it to multiple days or have another one. But yeah. Anyway, so I guess uh, we'll be there in spirit. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, okay, motion Chris. to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Yes. Aye. Aye. See you guys uh, on the upside. Stay Thank dry. You. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.